With this course, you'll learn how to use the Blink platform to create apps for iOS and Android that work with the Arduino 933 IoT and the ESP32 or any other supported device. This course is perfect if you want to create mobile phone powered microcontroller applications. In this lecture, I'll talk about the learning outcomes of this course and how it's structured so that you know what to expect. Let's begin with the Blink platform, which is the main topic of this course. With Blink, you can create smartphone applications that allow you to easily interact with microcontrollers or even full computers such as the Raspberry Pi. The focus of the Blink platform is to make it super easy to develop the mobile phone application. As you'll see in this course, developing a mobile app that can talk to your Arduino is as easy as dragging a widget and configuring a pin. With Blink, you can control an LED or a motor from your mobile phone with literally zero programming. This is actually the first experiment that I'll demonstrate in this course. But don't let this simplicity make you think that Blink is only useful for trivial applications. Blink is a robust and scalable tool that is used by hobbyists and the industry alike. You can use it to monitor the soil humidity of your vegetable garden and turn on the water or open up your garage door with your phone. You can also use it to control smart furniture that can learn from your routines or embed IoT and AI to traditional industrial products such as a water boiler or for improving the integrity and safety of oil fields. As you can see, the applications are very diverse. Blink is free to use for personal use and prototyping. The business model generates profits by selling subscriptions to businesses that want to publish Blink powered apps for their hardware products or services. Let's go on and take a closer look at each component of the Blink platform. First, we have the smartphone app. The Blink smartphone app is really an application editor. It allows you to create one or more projects. Each project can contain graphical widgets like virtual LEDs, buttons, value displays, and even a text terminal, and can interact with one or more devices. With the help of the Blink library, it is possible to control the Arduino or ESP32 pins directly from your phone without having to write any code at all. It's also possible to share a project with friends or even customers so that they can access the connected devices but not be able to modify the project. Imagine a scenario where you build a smartphone application where you can control lights, window blinds and room temperature from your phone. You can share the project with other family members so that they can also access the same functionality. The second component of the Blink platform are the various Blink microcontroller libraries. I'm really amazed by the range of devices and connectivity types that the Blink platform supports. This support is implemented by means of a Blink library that targets a device and connectivity type combination. For example, if you want to use your Arduino Uno with an Ethernet shield, you would use the library Blink Simple Ethernet, which contains the Blink firmware plus the required connectivity support. If you want to use your Arduino Uno with the Wi-Fi 101 shield, you'd use the library Blink Simple Wi-Fi Shield 101. Both sketches would use the same Blink infrastructure, such as the physical pins that are part of the Arduino's hardware, as well as the virtual pins that are implemented in software by the Blink platform. This is very important because it means that with a bit of planning, you can write sketches that can be easily shared among different target devices. You can write a sketch for an Arduino Uno and with minimal modification, run it on an Arduino MKR 1010. In this course, I'll show you how to share a sketch between an Arduino Nano 33 IoT and an ESP32 by only changing a single line of code. Blink also supports clients that are not microcontrollers. You can write client code that is JavaScript, Python, or Lua thanks to the available Blink libraries for these languages. This means that you can have a Blink project that interacts with an Arduino and with Python code running on a Linux virtual machine somewhere on the cloud. 
the possibilities here are very exciting. The third component of the Blink platform is the Blink server. Unlike IoT platforms such as If This and That, Twilio, and even other Food IO, you can host a private instance of the full Blink server and connect your smartphone Blink app to it. The Blink cloud server is an excellent choice for most projects as it's always there, ready to use. We'll use the cloud server in the first few experiments in this course to help you get started with minimal effort. However, as you'll see, the Cloud Blink server has imposed limitations. Some limitations are due to the topology of the server. So depending on your geographical location, the server may be in a different continent, which makes communications between the app, the devices and the server quite slow due to the amount of time that it takes for packets to travel across the internet. Another imposed limitation is that in the cloud server, you can only use a small number of widgets. Blink is using the concept of energy and energy units to implement a pricing system for its widgets. In the cloud server, you may start a new project with just 1000 energy units. An LED widget may cost you 200 units, leaving 800 units for other widgets. But on a private server, you can set your own energy limits. You can configure your server to allocate 100,000 energy units to new users, and this is totally up to you. Of course, you can purchase additional energy units to spend on the Cloud Blink server, and this is a legitimate consideration, especially if the users of your Blink project are distributed around the world, which means that latency is not a big issue. However, a private Blink server gives you additional benefits. You get essentially unlimited energy units so that you can build any Blink application you can think of. There's minimal latency, which is useful when your application is used in a limited geographic area and responsiveness is important. And third, and in my opinion, the most important point is that you have total control of your data. You can keep your own backups of your private server. You can migrate your server to a new host. You can implement whichever security mechanism you wish, and you can finally control your users. In this course, I'll show you how to install and configure a private Blink server so that you can see the related benefits and costs. You can run an instance of the Blink server on any host that has a Java runtime environment. In this course, I use a $15 Raspberry Pi 0W running the Raspberry Pi operating system. This is a computer with just half a gigabyte of RAM and still runs the Blink server without any issues at all. You can use any Raspberry Pi with Wi-Fi. It does not need to be a Raspberry Pi 0W. In fact, you can use any Linux or Windows host you want, including virtual machines. In this course, I'll show you how to set up your Raspberry Pi 0W to use its limited resources efficiently. And I will also show you how to do basic configuration of your Blink server, including setting up email notifications, port forwarding so that you can access it from anywhere on the internet, how to create custom security certificates, how to backup your project data, and how to migrate your server between hosts. Let's have a look at the course learning objectives. In this course, I've set the following main objectives. One is to learn how to create a simple Blink project using the Cloud Blink server. Using the Cloud Blink server, you learn how to use the most important and commonly used Blink widgets and the mobile app development process. Two is to learn how to install configure and manage a private Blink server. While I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 0W, you can use the knowledge you'll earn to manage a Blink server on any host. The private Blink server will open up exciting capabilities for your mobile app development. And three, you'll learn how to use two popular microcontrollers, the Arduino Nano 33 IoT and the ESP32 dev kit with Blink. In fact, if you check the list of devices that are supported by Blink, you'll see that the Arduino Nano 33 IoT is not in it. However, as you learn, that does not mean that you can't use it with Blink. I'll show you 
that with a little effort, you can use many more devices than those explicitly listed as supported. Okay, now let's have a look at the course organization. This course is organized in three main parts. In the first part, you learn the basics of mobile development on the Blink platform. This includes creating an account on the cloud server, building your first Blink project, and learning how to use most of the available widgets from the Blink library. In the second part, you learn how to install, configure, and manage a Blink private server. For this, I'll use the Raspberry Pi Zero W as a low-cost but efficient host. And in the third part, you learn how to set up your Raspberry Pi Zero as a Wi-Fi hotspot. With a Wi-Fi hotspot, your Blink server can operate in total independence of other networks. You'll be able to connect your Arduinos or other devices and your phone to the hotspot and operate your application in places where there are no other connectivity options. Okay, that's it for this lecture. Please take a few minutes to complete the remaining lectures in this section so that you learn about the specifics of the required hardware and software. I'll also give you a quick demonstration of the Blink platform and explain how to get the most out of this course.